two, one. Access granted. This seminar is of course uh, an initiative uh, of uh, mass. Uh, young, um, and I think I think uh, everyone knows uh, uh, this industry and ecosystem is very important, especially uh, at the current geopolitical uh, situation. And that is why we are uh, convening this uh, program uh, to let all the stakeholders to connect and talk about this uh, uh, ecosystem and uh, technology behind this. And uh, of course, we have the advantage of talent and also great deposit of uh, uh, ion absorption clay in Malaysia. And as the government has already mentioned that we are having a moratorium of uh, raw material uh, export. So we have already banned raw material export. Therefore, we need to have, uh, uh, we need to develop uh, midstream and downstream uh, besides, uh, besides uh, uh, the raw material. So uh, I think this is a good start. This is a good start, uh, especially uh, uh, we cannot have uh, one country controlling uh, all the resources uh, in this world. Uh, that will create uh, vulnerabilities in the global supply chain. Uh, so this is what we are starting to uh, do in Malaysia. Okay. What is that one country that is controlling all the resources? Well, everybody knows, right? Uh, of course, uh, China controls about 70% of the processing uh, capacity, as I mentioned in my speech. So uh, uh, since we have the deposit and since uh, we have uh, partners in Malaysia that could help us uh, develop, of course, including China uh, and from other countries. So uh, uh, we think uh, it's uh, strategic for us to uh, develop our processing uh, capacity as well. You spoke about technological sovereignty. Yeah. What is technological sovereignty when it comes to RE Indonesia? Well, uh, when we talk about uh, technological sovereignty, of course, it's like uh, we need to uh, we need to develop our own technology uh, capacity so that uh, we do not rely on uh, uh, certain countries. Uh, I think that is a, a quite clear definition of uh, uh, technological sovereignty. So in Malaysia, uh, when we say we explore uh, collaboration with uh, uh, foreign partners, we are also looking at uh, developing our uh, technology capacity. Uh, that's why um, uh, it's important for our uh, collaboration to have a tech transfer and also talent development. What was in our operating license was that we would undertake research mm -hmm. to understand whether this was feasible. And um, as uh, the Minister has just said, one of the important things, and that's what today is all about, is that this is work which has been undertaken. Linus has done some work. Linus has done some work with mm -hmm. uh, ANSTRO in Australia and Malaysian Academia has done work as well. So all of these have been parallel um, trained so that um, discovery and development can be shared across each of those areas. The good news is they all found out much the same thing. It would have been a bit of a problem if it, they hadn't, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so today's uh, seminar is about sharing some of the outcomes of yeah. that research and what may or may not be uh, possible next steps. Yeah. So ge generally speaking, uh, uh, everything is in progress and is progressing well, uh, especially on the thorium extraction uh, 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 yeah, research. So uh, today is a seminar to talk about it. And uh, uh, I mean, as government, uh, we are happy with the progress. Minister, uh, under the MOU that was signed with the US last week, there are no restrictions to be imposed on IE to the US. Uh, does that affect Linus in any way? Because Linus is not an American company. Uh, how well, does this affect the RE industry in Malaysia? Well, I don't see any problem in that because uh, uh, we are advocating uh, uh, openness and uh, transparency. So um, with that uh, clause, in the agreement, uh, well, I don't see any restriction on liners or any other con uh, or any other companies because uh, that that clause is actually to uh, promote openness. We do not put restriction on any companies or country. 
does this affect our sovereignty for, for them to say they want more and we cannot say no? Well, of course, it depends on the capacity uh, uh, of our production. I mean, uh, even they say they say they want more, but if we can't produce more, uh, that that one we can't we can't uh, we can't help. So uh, that is um, not the purpose of the clause. Purpose of the clause is to promote openness, so that no restriction on specific country or any other company. The PM said there's an exit clause. What is the exit clause in this? Uh, I think you should ask Mitty on that. <laughs> Maybe on the processing and separation facilities and technology manager. Right now, it's just like this. Mm. Doing a very good job here. But are we looking at any other options, uh, partners for the technology? We know that China still has technology there. Well, uh, of course, uh, we as I, as I say, we promote openness and uh, we, we have no uh, preference on uh, any countries. Uh, of course, Linus is already here. Uh, thank you very much for that. And, uh, but at the same time, uh, we also uh, maintain uh, open to all uh, any country or uh, company who are willing to share their technology. Right now, there isn't any uh, firm. There are discussions. Uh, there are discussions. What about the maybe, Korean? Uh, maybe I could just to give you some idea. Um, there are very few companies in the world that actually know how to process rare earths um, in a sustainable fashion. And in fact, there are very few who know how to process it in any fashion. So there are many who would like to be involved. And many of the intergovernment agreements that have been signed recently have been about encouraging that. Malaysia has a head start, like a big head start, like a long way a head start because Malaysians have developed skills and competencies and intellectual property over the past decade that are not held anywhere else. And so the opportunity is to build on that and to keep being out the front. And yes, others might come in, but they've got to chase, they've got to run to catch up. Country said uh, there was a Korean um, downstream manufacturing. Uh, Can you elaborate on that? That was uh, announced by PM the other day in, in Korea. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah. What? So our vision has always been aligned with the government's vision that Malaysia will not just be a centre of excellence for rare earth processing, but actually be able to develop its own resource, um, particularly as the Minister uh, mentioned, the ionic clay deposits, but potentially others as well and also have downstream processing into the magnets which are used in um, the new, new energies, in renewable energy, but also in electronics and in automotive. These are all industries that are here in Malaysia and being able to be fully integrated will be really beneficial. So over the years, we've um, spoken to many potential magnet makers and said, oh, why don't you come and invest in a magnet plant in Malaysia? And for a variety of reasons, it just hasn't happened. But what we have done is that we've engaged with a Korean company, JS Link, who are going to invest in um, a magnet factory in Gebeng, in Kwantan, just down the road from us, and we will be co-investors in that facility.